Hello, everybody. Welcome to the show. I'm your host, Anya, with Restream Team in Austin, Texas. And I'm Benjamin with the Customer Success Team located in Southern Oregon. And this is Livestream with Restream. This is the show when we answer your questions. This is our live Q&A. And we also demo a little bit of our product, show what's new with Restream Studio. And, but most importantly, this is your time and your space. It's a two-way street. So please don't be shy and drop those questions in the chat. And we are actually going to start with asking... Um, actually, first of all, I, I just want to uh, give a little announcement of what's going to happen soon. We are going to have a little promo code and a giveaway in the end of the stream. So we're going to give you a special discount after all the demos and all the questions. So make sure you stick around all the way till the end. And to help us understand a little bit of what kind of audience we are having today, I would love to for you guys to share a little bit about what you do. So let us know in the comments, what kind of content do you stream? And um, yeah, just, just a very brief kind of like spiel, like, hey, I'm doing church service or I'm a marketer, you know, doing social media strategy and stuff. And I am seeing people showing up today. Oh, okay. The chat is, is getting, it's getting. Oh, uh, hi, Grace. You know. I see you in the chat there. I'm yeah. Like, hi, Grace. I see Taylor. Um, I see Andres is saying, uh, is asking about local media source. Definitely something that we will cover today in our questions. Um, Anya, loving the background. Thank you. I love it too. <laughs> Is it a sunrise or a sunset? That is the question that I had for myself today. I'm, I'm, I'm calling it a sunrise. So yeah. that would be awesome. All right. I stream live guitar jams, says Ooh. Urban Guitar Jams. Ooh. That is amazing. I love it. Uh, there is real estate. Uh, there is uh, trying to get started. Hi from Someone's Paris. Got That's a amazing. Top secret project. Ooh. <laughs> I love that. Um, live festivals and music experiences. That is always great. Secret project. Where uh, where are you seeing that one? Let's um, let's highlight it. Yeah, this was top secret project by uh, Taylor is here. Oh, that's amazing. I would love to. I would love to learn more about it, even though it's kind of counterintuitive, right? Mm. Um, so pop culture and conversations. We see gameplay. This is amazing. Um, and hi, guys. That's great, always. Um, okay, awesome. So that really helps us to understand kind of like who is in the room and uh, what we should um, specifically specifically talk about uh, live stream smartphone tech. That's awesome. So that's like tutorials, right? Like you could like yeah. teach people or like show how things work. That's amazing. I see um, interviews with marketers. Oh, Oops, sorry. Nice. I double click that. Interviews with marketers for Content Marketing Institute. Amazing. Oh, Manina, hello. I know you. I've been on one of your streams as a guest <laughs> and uh, we did the Content Marketing Institute event. Uh, that is amazing. So good to see you here. Thanks for joining. And there is video games, of course, uh, our all-time favorite. Amazing. Hey. So <laughs> yeah, I think we'll just go ahead and uh, jump right into this. Uh, we will start with a quick Restream Studio tour for those of you who are just starting, who are beginners or who are exploring. We'll just show you uh, real quick using our screen share feature of what Restream Studio looks like and what the buttons do. And Ben, please take it away. Yeah, absolutely. Let me go ahead and just start by sharing my screen here. I'm going to get a little bit of a, of a double effect going on here. Yep. And so you can kind of see it's a uh, an, end, uh, an endless loop within the, the studio here. That's completely normal when you're screen sharing a camera that you're, that you're viewing. Um, but you can take a look here and you can see a couple different features available. This is the host view. Um, so this is what you see as a host um, when you're actually the one producing the content within the studio. Um, as a guest, you see a much uh, more truncated view of this. It's uh, kind of more simplified just with a couple controls for the guest's camera. Um, but uh, to get started, um, we have our chat obviously here, which is like how we're seeing your comments. It's how we're highlighting your comments. Um, it's how we kind of uh, keep an eye on what's going on and and can do those things like, oh, Taylor is here. Uh, he said that it's a morning news show. There we go. That's the top secret awesome. project. <laughs> Very cool. Good to know. Uh, thanks for sharing, Taylor. Um, it's really useful, obviously, for highlighting comments, doing uh, Q and A's on, you know, answering questions, those kind of things. It's it's very nice. Um, uh, basic controls here down at the bottom. We have a couple different layout options, as you can see. Um, this is our our basic contain, which kind of just shows um, everything equally together um, with the uh, the background visible. 
Um, if we do the cover option, it actually gets rid of the the background. If you just want to have like a complete focus on whoever it is that you're interviewing or, or speaking to, you can do a half screen, which kind of shows the, like in this instance, it's the screen share, but I could flip that around if I wanted to and put Anya there instead. Um, you get a little bit better view of the screen share that way because this kind of cuts that in half. Um, or if you want to kind of focus on just one person like Anya, or if I wanted to focus on my screen share here, I can have Anya and myself down at the bottom and be screen sharing up here if I was doing like a, you know, slides, presentation, something like that. You can have your, your guest speakers displayed at the bottom while you're also screen sharing or displaying whatever um, project that, that you're talking about here. You can also do cinema for a little bit more of a, a background experience. You can have your kind of uh, branding in the background um, and have that as a, as a bit more um, outlined look to it. And then finally, the thumbnails look, which kind of does the same thing, just puts them on, on the side. Those are the, the basic layouts that we have right now. We're always looking uh, at improving and adding more um, in, in the future. So you might see some, some new things pop up uh, in there as we continue to, to work on our studio. Of course, that, this is the screen share button that I'm using right now. Um, you can invite your guests, which is uh, a really cool feature. I'm sure a lot of you know about the guests, but for those of you who don't, uh, you can add up to 10 participants in the studio, uh, which means that I could send a link to, to someone and they could join in uh, from a, a device, whether it's a computer, mobile device, whatever it is. You can join in the studio as a speaker. Um, if you don't have a camera on your device, you can still use audio only. Um, or if you have a camera, you can join in with your camera and uh, audio and participate in the stream, uh, comment, answer questions, ask questions, all those kind of fun stuff. A couple, a couple other features down here, we have add a, add a video file, which lets you add a local video file to stream directly from your computer into the studio. If it's something that's like, oh, I want to play like a little five minute clip in the middle of my stream. Um, maybe it's a, a product release, something like that. So you have something prepared to show for, hey, this is our cool new product that we're featuring. Here's a, a quick little video that I want to show about it. And then you can have a discussion about it afterwards. Um, our RTMP uh, beta option is a cool new feature that we'll be talking about a little bit later, so I'm going to hold off on that. Um, and then, of course, um, the basic settings for controlling everything within the studio here. Um, so those are the, the basic options right there in the middle of the, of the studio. And, of course, then we have our graphics options, which controls a lot of really cool, neat things about the studio that makes it pretty unique. Um, we, right now we're using the, the theme of news, which is how the, the different um, chat is appearing here. I'm just going to go ahead and highlight. Uh, um, Taylor, you're getting highlighted again. <laughs> um, and so this is what the, the, um, the news one will look like. It takes up the whole bottom, but you can kind of change how that looks. We can go with the default theme, which is a little bit more, um, more condensed, or that nice rounded look for a little bit of a pop to, to your text. Those are our current themes right now, and of course you can change the color of it as you as you desire, um, kind of match it with your logo and branding, which you can actually see. Oh, let me hide that. Uh, you can actually see that down here. Um, we have our different logos and our different overlay options to get a really nice branded experience. Um, this is our live with restream, um, so that's how we've branded this. But you could upload and do any type of branding of your own for your product, um, your company. Uh, and there's a lot of really cool things that you can do with it to kind of showcase your your own. A theme, uh, whether it's, you know, maybe if you're doing a gaming thing, you can, you know, add your, your gaming overlays. If you're doing um, maybe an internal meeting for your company, you can showcase whatever project it is that you're working on, your department, or, or if you're doing an interview, you can showcase your company. There's all sorts of different options that you can use this for. And of course, the, you can see the logo up in the corner, that live with Restream. And then, of course, uh, if we wanted to add an overlay, we have some really cool, uh, I think they're kind of cute, um, new spring ones uh, that are really fun uh, that we add um, seasonally. Uh, we did uh, Christmas-themed uh, back in during the holiday times, um, and now we've kind of moved on into our springtime themes. Uh, this one's got some cool geometric flowers and things like that. And then, of course, you can add in your own overlays. Um, 
for instance, if you wanted to to do this, um, obviously we're not formatted exactly for this, but if I were to do go this way, and there we go. Now we have our overlay with our names. Um, that's actually not my name. There we go. Thank you, Anya. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then a nice little um, uh, tag uh, up here that kind of merges with the, the logo. And that would definitely be my recommendation if you're going to be using a combination of logos and overlays is to kind of think about the like the dimensions and the positioning of how it's going to look within the studio. Because um, as you can see, our logo fits really nicely into this um, red kind of triangle to make it pop out. Um, and that's part of the overlay. And so this is, has, has been kind of tailored to work together um, with that. And so we have a lot of information available on our help center about the specific dimensions and recommendations on how we um, recommend that you uh, put those types of overlays and stuff together. Um, and then, of course, there's video clips and backgrounds, which um, video clips are, is that uh, kind of, oh, thank you, <laughs> is that uh, kind of opening clip that you saw at the beginning here, that kind of countdown. Uh, you can add in your own video clips. They do need to be 150 megabytes in size or lower, um, which is why we kind of give that uh, add a video file option for the larger and longer files. Um, these are really good for you know, opening, you know, countdowns, opening sequences, um, maybe closing credits, um, or just a really short blurb about like, hey, this is my show today. Um, you know, whatever it is that you want to do with that, like a quick 30 to uh, 60 second kind of video you can do here and upload those. I believe the, the max that you can have uploaded at a given time is 10 uh, right now. Um, and then of course there is the background, which is what you see back here um, behind us. Um, that's that kind of blue background with the, the cool looking different uh, shapes and things. Um, and that's what we got right here. If I hide that, it just goes to a blank uh, back black background. Um, and then when I show it, it shows up right there. Um, so those are our basic kind of options within the studio right now. As you can see, it's pretty versatile. Um, and we've, add, we've continually added a couple um, new things um, that we're going to talk about here in a couple minutes as well. Awesome. Yeah, let's uh, go ahead and take some questions from the chat because I see they're piling up and we will uh, definitely, we'll, we'll come back to showcasing some new features uh, later because there's a lot of, a lot going on in the chat. So we want to make sure mm. we acknowledge that. So a uh, great question from uh, Orbit Guitar Legend. I set up a scheduled event to stream to YouTube, Facebook, Twitter simultaneously. When I went live, a new stream was created in YouTube, so I did not connect to the one I set up in the event. And I saw that several other people commented saying that that is something that they also experienced in the past. So the only way to avoid that is to make sure that you uh, actually access your event versus accessing your live stream, like your instant studio. And I'm going to share my screen real quick here, to, so I'll, I'll show you. Uh, what I'm talking about. So when you first enter your live studio and you just click enter studio, you, you end up in the space where you are um, kind of, this is your instant stream. But also on the side right here, you have your events. And if you open, I'm just going to open a separate separate tab here. Um, let me know if you can still see it. So these are your events that you scheduled in advance. And this is, by the way, how you can create them. You can schedule a live stream or pre-recorded video, but don't worry about it right now. We're, we're on the event section. So this is your event. And if you are, if you created an event in advance, it also, um, as you can see here, creates those little uh, prepared uh, videos for people to set reminders, kind of like uh, announcements, right, on end platforms. So if you want to end up at this event, you got to enter Live Studio from here. Because if you just simply go to your dashboard and um, and enter your studio from from your regular place, that will create your um, a new live stream. Because our system will think that you are trying to build a new stream and not stream into that event that you scheduled earlier. So that sounds like that could be your issue. However, if the stream from your event was sent to the event on Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn, but only YouTube created a new event, that is a good reason to reach out to our support team so they could look into your specific case and investigate further because that should be happening. Uh, but that's one thing too, to remember. If you made an event, start from the event. If you want to go live instantly, start from instant streaming. All right. Um, so there is uh, a couple more uh, cool questions. Again, just want to make sure we acknowledge people uh, who already asked some questions. Uh, but uh, please make sure, like, if you if you ask a question earlier when we were doing the demo, please don't hesitate to resubmit it because uh, you know 
thinks we don't want to make we want to make sure that we answer everything. And if, if you didn't get um, highlighted, then you know just do it again. Uh, so uh, Manina is asking, how does Restream know which name to place under which person? How Annie's caption name is under her video box and not bands and the other way around? Great question. If you are creating your own overlay. Um, you are placing, just like Ben showed, your graphics accordingly. And then remember that here you can always drag and drop, right? Like, so if for whatever reason you see that you and your guest or your co-host ended up in the wrong with the wrong names, you, you can just drag and drop them. Alternatively to that, you can also use our participant names. So right here, you see how you have Anya and Benjamin. So those are designed, those are basically integrated with Restream. So you don't have to design them separately. And uh, that's whatever your guest entered. And they're just going to stick with them no matter which layout and overlay we end up using. You see how it, it will always adjust to whatever new situation yeah, we're building. So yeah, so that's, um, that's, that's about the participants' names and the overlays. Let's see. Lots of questions. I love that. Um, so the next one. I'm uh, just going to take the last one that I see from uh, from Drix. Uh, when will audio avatar will be available on Restream Studio? That's a good one, Ben. What do you think about audio avatar avatars? Um, I think that we're going to have that very soon. Uh, we have we already have some um, options for avatars. Uh, we have placeholders right now, um, and so I think. Um, do you mean like a like an actual picture that you can upload for yourself, or do you mean like? Um, an avatar of like if somebody's joining um, and they can choose an avatar from one of their social media platforms. There's a, there's a couple different different ways that you could go with that, um, but we are actively working on on uh, our avatar option right now. If I were to uh, disable my camera really quick here, let me just do that. Um, you can actually yeah. see that I do have an like a, a placeholder um, set up for myself there. You can see it's a B because um, my participant name is set to Benjamin, and so it defaults to the the first letter of my participant name, and it's uh, and it's showing that. Um, you can kind of see that the audio is moving when I'm speaking, and it kind of gives that sense of like, hey, there's somebody there that doesn't have a camera right now. Um, so we do have that um, at the moment, um, but I have a feeling that you're talking about more of a, uh, a displayed type picture, which I believe we are actively working on and will be adding soon in the future. I can't say exactly when, um, but it will be coming soon. Awesome. So another question, kind of like a follow-up question for the events. Uh, when you enter the event, do you immediately go live? Uh, how do you invite a guest? So you do not go live immediately. Let me share uh, my screen again. And since I already have a couple of events scheduled for the future. Uh, so when you are in the event section, after you created it, you can enter Live Studio for that specific event at any time. And once you enter the event from here, and it's it's taking a little bit of time because you know I'm also live in the other event, uh, that's when you will go live, only after clicking this go live button. From here, from the event, you can also copy the guest link and you, you will see that it actually has event specific link. So that link is gonna be different from the link that, dem uh, that Ben demonstrated earlier. Another way to access that link that in my opinion is a little bit easier is when you are just here, just looking at your event, you can actually copy it from here and then you can share it with your guests. Um, and the same in the same way, um, you can actually copy uh, or open the, the links to other platforms where the event is scheduled if you want to share the URLs uh, and remind people to send reminders. So by clicking this Enter Live Studio, you're not starting the event, so don't worry about it. All right. So Couple yeah, many many really questions. Good questions here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Please pick, uh, feel free to pick the next one. You know, while I'm, while I'm while I'm doing the absolutely. Um, I think this is a really cool question from uh, Ivan here. Um, he is asking uh, how he act if he can access the analytics um, on certain streaming platforms after the stream ends, and you can absolutely do that. Obviously, your analytics will be available on end platforms, but Restream does also. Uh, grab certain analytics for certain platforms, YouTube and Facebook being among them. Let me go ahead and screen share where you can find that really quick. And here we go. And I'm going to go ahead and go to, as you can see, I add, access my little dashboard on the left-hand side here, and we have analytics right here. So I'm going to go ahead and open this in a new tab. 
and move over here and you can kind of see our analytics overview um, and this is um, this is for our, our restream account um, Anya's here so this isn't my personal <laughs> my personal analytics um, but you can kind of see a, a lot of different metrics that go here if I go to the last sec the, the, the last session um, it, it will go to um, the previous session um, actually this is the current ongoing one um, so it's not entirely accurate because it's um, still ongoing. Um, but if we take, you can take a look at all sec sessions, and we can you can kind of see some tests and things, uh, some short tests. Um, this one was back from the twenty twenty fourth, and you can see a good number of different metrics here: your average viewers, your maximum viewers, the peak viewing times, um, followers, um, chat trends, um, and then of course the actual um, incoming and outgoing um, data for your stream as well, as far as the bit rates keyframe intervals, um, frames per second, and then the outgoing to the end platforms as well. Um, but I imagine that you're probably more interested in kind of the viewer side of things, which is this first tab here, and it shows you graph, uh, graphically kind of the, the viewers of your stream, as well as like a sort of a pie graph of where you, the majority of people are watching you from, um, that kind of thing. Um, and we're constantly working on our analytics, improving and adding more things. Um, and so this is something that you'll see in the future, more stuff added, um, better. It, it's just going to get better <laughs> as time goes on. So, <laughs> so definitely keep an eye out on, you know, when, when we update that and when we add in more things to analytics, because we do know that this is an important part of streaming and people are always very interested in to know what are what are my analytics where are people watching from what the peak times that people watch me stream from because that will always help you improve where and how and when you stream amazing so there is a quick question about uh from from michael here if sharing screen of excel on facebook does all the host mouse movements show so if you are sharing so there are several ways how you can share screen you can share your entire screen you can also share a tab if you're in Chrome, and you can also share an application. So I am not a Windows user, so I'm not quite sure how the application of Excel is going to show up there. But I know when I'm sharing the Keynote application, it does not really show my mouse movement. But if I did share um, a browser tab or my whole screen, then, of course, you will be able to see my mouse, whatever, whatever I do with this as, as a host. So I, I hope that makes sense. And Ben, feel free to correct me if I'm not if I'm not interpreting that right. But that sounds like that's what, what happens to yeah, me. Yeah, I think you got that question right. <laughs> Okay, awesome. Um, and then there's another one that I really like uh, that Taylor is asking here. My client wants um, a bug of live clock and a temperature. Mm -hmm. Is there a way to do this um, for, for this to exist on top of the broadcast as a layer of sorts? So it sounds like you are talking about the dynamic overlays or animated overlays, which is a feature that we are very actively working on. And mm -hmm. these two people here are championing it very actively because we've also been doing <laughs> overlays. And um, so the answer to this question is your client will soon have some news. Uh, we will have some news for your client to possibly be able to do that. So just hang on tight. That is possibly coming as, as a browser source uh, or animated overlay feature. I'm super so excited that about that. Is, <laughs> me too, me too. That's yeah. awesome. Um, there is also a question from Otis here. He's asking, will the scroll text be coming soon? So just to make sure, and um, Otis, feel free to to like elaborate on that a little bit. Uh, by scroll text, I assume you're meaning the ticker uh, when, when you have like a moving text, the ticker in the end. So that's not in the works right now. We're not um, actually planning to develop that. But if that's something that you would like to see, uh, let us know, uh, you know, Submit a comment here, reach out to our support because we do collect your feedback and very proactively go through it. And a lot of times, whatever you guys say will make your life better, uh, actually makes it to our roadmap. So, so, or feel free to correct me if that's not what you meant by the scroll text, but I'm assuming you're talking about the ticker. All right. Um, Ben, whenever yes. you're ready, <laughs> click yeah. on your next on, on your next question. I'm just going to take this sure. real uh, real quick sure. because Anthony asked it a couple of times about the mixed cloud chat integration. It's a great question. I 100% with you on this one. We are integrated with mixed cloud as a platform, but we're currently not supporting their chat through API, which basically makes it one way street. Right, like you can stream your content, but you cannot get the comments from Mixcloud. We are working on that. And thank you very much for the reminder. We will ping our BD team today and remind them to talk to Mixcloud folks about this one because 100% agreed. 
the inter interaction with your viewers and your audience is important. That's what Restream is about. So yeah, we'll remind them of that. Thanks for letting us know. Um, we got an interesting question here from oh, uh, Antonio. Um, he's asking if he's ingesting a stream to Restream at 1080p, and he's streaming that out to YouTube um, and 1080, and also to Facebook. Does he need to manually set a resolution for Facebook as well? Um, that's a really good question uh, because Facebook officially, um, the expected resolution is 720p. So if you're streaming to multiple places, generally the best practice is to set your output resolution to the, the lowest uh, standard. So for instance, if it is Facebook, you would want to generally shoot for, for 720. Now, um, with these with a specific um, like circumstance of Facebook, they do automatic transcoding when they ingest on Facebook site. So even if you're streaming at 1080p everywhere, and you're also sending that to as 1080p to Facebook as well, they will automatically transcode that when they ingest it on their side, and it will show up in 720 on their end in, in most situations. There's some some different accounts and things like that that do have a little bit uh, different rules to them with uh, specific if, if you're like affiliated or a part of the level up program with Facebook, they do get a little bit higher resolution and bitrate options that way. Um, but if you're not part of those programs, the expected resolution is 720. So even if you do send your stream at 1080, it'll appear in 720 on Facebook. So to answer the question directly, no, you don't need to manually set the resolution to Facebook um, in that instance. Now, if you're streaming at something like 4K resolution, um, Facebook is probably going to have a little bit of a hard time transcoding that down into 720. Um, so in that case, yes, you would want to manually adjust it in that way. But if you're doing 720 to 1080, that's a very easy um, transcoding and they're going to be able to handle that. Amazing. Uh, a couple more questions that I already you know, pre-picked for myself while Ben was sharing uh, his his answer. Do guests have to view on YouTube or do they log on to Restream? If, you, if YouTube can it be kept private, that's from Phil on YouTube. Uh, Phil, so Restream doesn't really, we are the tool that sends your broadcast to the platforms, but we're not a platform itself. So your viewers cannot watch your stream on Restream, so to say. They will have to go to one of the platforms that you're sending your video to. That being said, there are several ways how you can keep your stream private. On YouTube, you can create an unlisted event and actually stream to an unlisted event and only share that link with people you want to join. So in that case, it's going to be private. Another way to do that, um, if, if you're not stuck on YouTube, is uh, Facebook groups. You can create a private Facebook group and send your stream into that group and invite only specific members to make it exclusive. The same applies to LinkedIn. If you are approved to stream on LinkedIn, there are LinkedIn events that you can set to private and invite specific people from there. Super convenient if you have a lot of network connections on LinkedIn and you can just um, invite people through the platform. So those are your options if you want to keep it private. Uh, but there is, there is at this point no way for, for the viewers to access the stream on Restream unless you record it only in Restream without sending it anywhere at all and then download the video and then share it with your audience through some other channel such as Dropbox or Google Google Files, right? So that's that's another way to kind of like over overcome this. In this case, you will just be recording the video and then sharing the recording using Restream as your recording tool. All right. Um, and there's one more question that I just want to make sure we don't miss. There's a question about Instagram, our favorite. So every time we go live with uh, live stream with Restream, we always know that someone is going to ask about Instagram. <laughs> so uh, the the answer, when will Instagram be part of Restream is the question for Instagram. Because currently, Instagram only allows streaming through their native app. So they basically want you to go live only through your phone on the app and no other way. So there are no third-party applications that support multi-streaming to Instagram. The moment they allow that, Restream will be the first one to happily bring it over to you. So definitely something worth bringing up to Instagram folks if you have any connections or if there's any way for, for you guys to submit your feedback over there. But right now, it's just unfortunately not up to us. We're, we're, we'll be happy to bring that to you, but it's just like Instagram doesn't, doesn't allow that integration. There are a couple of workarounds. You can use certain third-party applications such as Yellow Duck, to actually send your stream out to Instagram. So those applications trick your system into thinking that um, Instagram is actually not, not an Instagram, but it's just another platform, like a custom RTMP platform. 
um, and you can send your, st your stream there. But unfortunately, since it's not a native integration through API, the comments are not going to be coming back. So it will be just a one-way street. And it's a little a little flaky. And since, 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 you know, like it's kind of like a little bit of work around, around their rules. So that's that's the Instagram answer. Um, sorry, sorry, it's not, you know, great news, but that's kind of how, uh, how things work today. Yeah, that's actually a really good segue into um, uh, Dion. I think I... Uh, Diane, I think I'm saying your name right. I'm sorry if I'm not. Um, and she's actually having a problem with Yellow Duck. Um, and she's saying that when she goes live to Yellow Duck, um, to Instagram through Yellow Duck, she gets the URL and key, but nothing is showing on Instagram. Um, and that's kind of uh, part of what Anya was talking about is because it's a workaround, there's a couple little unique things that you need to understand about how that works. Um, the first, um, and I think one of the most key things to, to note that's not really um, publicly out there as far as that the that in, um, information goes is that when you're streaming to Instagram through Yellow Duck, you can't view your own live stream from your own account. Um, so if I were to be live uh, to my Instagram account right now um, when we were streaming this to, to Instagram and I went on my phone to go check my live stream, I actually wouldn't see it um, because I'd be checking to the account that I was streaming to. So in order to actually check to see if you're live on Instagram, you actually have to have somebody else check for you or have a secondary account that you can log into and check your main account that you're actually streaming to uh, with. Uh, because Instagram is like, it's a very weird way of going live to Instagram. And so it gets confused and it's like, oh, you should be live through your phone to Instagram. And so when you check your stream through your phone on Instagram, it doesn't show you anything. It's, it's like, well, you're live already. Like, how would you be watching yourself while you're streaming yourself through your phone? It just, it kind of is one of those mind blowing moments for Instagram and it just gets really confused. So, so um, that could possibly, uh, possibly be what's going on there. So I would double check, have somebody else check the stream for you from a different Instagram account or set up a secondary test account that you can check that with. Um, the other thing that that might be is that the the stream key from Yellow Duck to Instagram changes every time that you go to go live. So you do need to update that um, on your custom RTMP channel in, in Restream every time right before you go live. So when you log into Yellow Duck and you say, okay, I'm ready to go live, you have to copy that stream key and put it into the custom RTMP for Yellow Duck on, uh, on Restream side right before you go live. Because it's only temporarily available for a couple minutes before you, for you to connect because of the way that it's working. Um, so those would be my two recommendations on, on how you can kind of look at um, troubleshooting that issue. Ben, I selected a question for you this time because I think it's a good one and you're an expert <laughs> because yep. the, the question is, are you using virtual background and how can we enable that on Restream? So despite how this looks, my sunrise or sunset, uh, this is actually mm. a real thing. Like I can actually attach this. This is a wall. But Ben <laughs> is this using is... the virtual background. So <laughs> yeah. would you mind sharing how you do that? Yeah, absolutely. I'm happy to, to share that. So I'm actually using OBS uh, right now. And you're like, wait a second, you're in you're in the Restream studio. Like you, you can't like we've been told over and over again, these are separate things. You can't use them together. And in, in most situations, yes. Um, and previous to these new options, yes, they were separate and didn't work together. Um, there's essentially two ways that you can use OBS uh, with the Restream studio now. Um, and that's actually how I'm getting um, this green screen effect right now. Um, this is actually a green screen behind me that I've just like blanked out. Um, and that's using the OBS virtual cam option. Um, so what I'm doing here, and I'll do a quick screen share so you can kind of see how I have this set up. Oh, I already had that going. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and bring up OBS really quick and you can actually see, hey, I'm in OBS right now um, and this is my camera um, and I'll, all I have is the video capture device set up. Um, and over here you see virtual cam. So OBS isn't actually connecting directly into the studio using um, any like streaming output in, in that sense. I'm not like streaming out of OBS right now. Uh, I've just enabled the virtual cam within OBS. And what that does is it allows me to use the OBS virtual cam um, input option in the studio. Um, and that's what lets me use the, the OBS features while I'm within uh, the Restream studio. And so I could do a number of different things if I wanted to have a, um, you know, a 
browser overlay or something like that show up in my camera um, while I'm in here, I could set that up in OBS um, and that would connect to, to the studio as, a, as the virtual cam. Um, certain things may not uh, work in this sense because um, it's not actively streaming. So certain types of browser overlays do require that you be actively streaming from over uh, from OBS in that sense, so that that part wouldn't work. Um, but anything locally within OBS, as far as overlays, videos, you know, all of those kind of things that are unique to OBS um, that aren't necessarily integrated into the studio quite yet. They're they're coming. Trust me, they're coming, but <laughs> they're not there yet. Um, that you know, you can use o o the OBS virtual cam in that way, and that's how I've gotten that. And and um, in a little bit, you might you might get a little background kind of sneak peek into what this looks like without that. Um, when I kind of join as a secondary guest to show multicam use here in a minute. Um, the other way to connect OBS is, of course, the um, RTMP beta option that we alluded to before. And that would actually let me stream from OBS directly into the studio um, using RTMP URL and stream key. Um, but again, that is different because that's actively streaming the information from OBS into the studio um, server, whereas this option, I'm just taking the camera source out of OBS locally and, and inserting it into my browser um, into the studio um, in that method. Awesome. I'm going to take one more question and then we're going to, we just have a couple of things to show you in terms of new features, the hot and new, our favorite. And of course we have a hack that we're going to share you, with you as well. Something that, you know, not, not very obvious, but might be very helpful. But before that, I'm just going to address Tim's question. Uh, we are streaming to multiple Facebook accounts plus YouTube and website. Can we get all those comments on Restream? Yes, 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 absolutely. That's the idea. Right now, as you can see, I am highlighting comments from Facebook and YouTube, and we are actually aggregating them from all the destinations that where we're streaming. One thing to note about your website, uh, kind of depending on how you send your, your stream to your website, if you're using our, our widgets or one of the Restream solutions, you're probably going to be using the player from either YouTube or Facebook or Twitch to actually embed your video onto your website. So the people won't necessarily be able to comment right on your website. And if there is any commentary option on your website, it's not going to go through and be supported by Restream. But as long as the comments are coming on your from your social platforms, you can totally pull them in. You can highlight them and actually show specifically which platforms they're coming from, which is actually one of our new features. Nice segue into the next part. Um, so I'm just going to demo it since we're on the comments. Um, as you can see right here, uh, when I highlight Tim's comment, right under his, kind of between his image and name, you can see a little icon of Facebook. And if I chose to highlight someone from YouTube, for example, the beast node uh, is saying, wow, private events on LinkedIn are great. And you can see how there, there is a little icon from YouTube appearing there. And let me just, for fun, find someone from LinkedIn. So that's another platform we're going live on today. And then there is a LinkedIn comment uh, icon in there. So that's new. Um, and um, another thing on the chat side, side of things that we recently introduced, some of you might have seen it already, is what we call chat overlay. So we can actually enable the whole chat and make it uh, appear on your screen. So if you guys comment right now, like everyone, just like say something, just like, you know, that doesn't even have to be a, like a really profound question. Uh, here we go. Mm -hmm. So once, uh, once you, um, and let me quickly remove this, uh, logo from here so you can see it. So once people start commenting, you can actually showcase the whole chat on your screen. So this is a great feature if you are going live to a bunch of different platforms. Here we go. Test, test, test. Yeah. <laughs> you can see my comment. Um, awesome. You guys are amazing. Um, so you cool. see how like it starts running and you can see how people are showing up there. So that's amazing opportunity to, for you to include people from different platforms and mm -hmm. actually connect them together. So like that's the use case that I always recommend for this one is that it's not necessarily to, for you because you can see the chat and you can highlight specific comments all you want. But this is for people from Facebook to see what people on YouTube are saying and for people on LinkedIn say, hey, Mike from YouTube, I love your question. I think this is great and I have the same problem. So um, yeah, that's uh, that's the, the chat overlay feature that I wanted to demo for you. And uh, yeah, uh, if you have any questions about this, please uh, pull, put them in. Uh, I guess one last thing that I would mention on this one is that you have a chat moderation within Restream. So not going to do that to anyone right now because you guys are all amazing, <laughs> but you can block users on 
like your chatters on specific platforms. So example, like options that I have is block user on YouTube. You can put them in a timeout or you can add to a block, a blacklist on restream chat. So that person will never, um, never be back into your chatting space. So that's kind of like a little bit of precaution if you are worried about the chat. Once it's displayed, it is displayed. You cannot really take it away unless you just simply hide the, the chat overlay and then it will be gone from your screen. But of course in the chat, um, you will have to catch it on time to monitor it. So uh, so that's just something to keep in mind. Um, yeah, and the next feature that I wanted to show you is, um, but sorry, I guess I'm taking over because I just have oh. a little bit more of, yeah, the, <laughs> of the of the stuff to show in terms of uh, the separate audio tracks. So let me go ahead. Yeah, and that, those are my, my little, um, you know. There was one thing I wanted to add about the, the, the chat moderation. Oh yeah, go ahead, that... please do. Um, there, in in addition to you know blocking specific users, you can actually go into the restream chat settings and filter out certain words and phrases that you don't don't want to appear. So if you're you know beforehand, if you're like, hey, I'm having this live stream with this certain group of people or this certain person, and there might be some sensitive things that you know I know people might say some some things about this person. I'm going to go ahead and pre-filter certain words and phrases that I just absolutely don't want to appear in the restream chat. Um, and that would prevent any of those messages with those words from showing in the restream chat um, at all. Um, this doesn't prevent it from the end platform. Uh, you would have to set that up on the end platform as well. Uh, but as far as restream chat goes, you can filter out words and phrases. Amazing. Yeah, that's great. Uh, thank you so much for adding that. That that's that's super super important. Alrighty, so separate tracks for all for those of you who are doing podcasts or repurposing content, which we highly recommend doing, because since you put the, all this effort into your live stream, you might as well take more out of those um, experiences and live videos. Uh, we now introduce a new feature that a lot of a lot of you guys, especially podcasters, were asking about, which we call separate tracks. So you will start at your video storage and pick any video or live stream that you did, ideally with a couple of people, right? Like so you have multiple tracks. And here you go. So you now have the option to download your full video with audio, your full audio. So that means all the mics, all the video pre previews and pre-rolls that you played and all the guests speaking together or your separate tracks. So for example, in this case, I had myself as a host, I had my guest, uh, Chris from LinkedIn, and I had a couple of video pre-rolls and end rolls that I played. Uh, we are actually going to change that to specific names of, the, of, of your files uh, very soon. But this is your opportunity to download those specific separate tracks in case you're repurposing this into a podcast and you want really clean, crisp, and isolated sound on, on those um, tracks. So the next thing that's coming this week is the ability to download this in one zip file if you just want it all in one place. Uh, and of course, the traditional way to download full video and audio remains here. Uh, but that is that is something you guys were asking about for quite a quite a bit, and this is now available on Restream. So Ben, I think it's time for you to demo the high definition, high resolution sound. Yeah, that's actually a really good segue. Um, talking about uh, the multi-track audio, and and you know when we're looking at audio, and we're, when we're thinking about audio, um, there's always different types of um, people who are are doing things. You know, you might just have like your your typical kind of Q and A session. Um, but I know that there were some people um, earlier who had mentioned that they are actually live streaming uh, music, uh, which. Obviously, when you're live streaming music, it's really important that you have as high of quality um, for audio as possible. And um, that's one of the, the newer things that we've added in is an option for high, um, the high definition audio um, and that's uh, or high resolution audio rather. Um, and so this actually inc um, increases the capture and output um, of your audio bitrate up to 256 kilobits per second. Um, so that's for that high quality audio uh, performance when you're doing like um, music streams or if you're doing like a podcast, which is super you know focused on the audio maybe you don't have your cameras enabled and it's just a, an audio stream and you maybe have like a you know some the placeholders and you're going to be doing oh thank you i should i should probably have screen shared that um yeah uh, and so you're gonna, gonna show how yeah yeah and we actually have the high resolution audio enabled right now um so this actually uh, will disable the the stereo audio input um option um but, uh, but you can still have echo cancellation and noise suppression enabled as well. Um, 
and it just increases the the bit rate that you're using. Um, generally, when when you're not using a high resolution audio, it's going to be somewhere around like 160 kilobits per second. That's pretty standard for audio bit rate. Um, so if you're really focused on Hey, like I need that really crisp, clear, um, high resolution audio. Um, I don't, you know, maybe you have like a soundboard um, that you have set up with your musical instruments and this is outputting um, really high quality audio into the studio. This is the option for you. This is what you want to have enabled to, to kind of preserve that level of quality when it um, outputs on the stream. Amazing. And one more thing that I wanted to share is about our RTMP, our new feature that we said, we'll get to this later. So later mm -hmm. is now yes. the, the opportunity to pull in other sources into Restream. So this is a new feature, uh, just for your information. Oh, yeah. So it's not, it's not yet available on the events because this is a pre-scheduled event. So I'm actually going to uh, go to my dashboard separately and just enter enter my regular live studio from here so I can show you how this looks. Um, so this is a new feature. It's still in beta and it is only available on our premium and business plans as of today. Uh, just so you know, if you if you open your studio and you don't see it there, that's, that's the limitation. So the RTMP, um, when you click on it, appears like this. So it shows you your RTMP URL and your stream key. So what it does for you, it allows you to enter this information into another source, such as your OBS, or one of the examples that I use a lot is Zoom, and then pull that Zoom webinar or that Zoom meeting or that OBS preset set of scenes into your Restream Studio. So the big question is, why would you want to do that, right? Like, why would I not just stay there in Zoom and, and do my business in there? Well, the answer is very simple. It's branding, right? So once you pull in a Zoom meeting um, into your studio, it's going to appear just like your guests, just right here. You can just toggle them in. And then you have all the wonderful things like highlighting the chatters and the comments from your community and your audience and show their names and uh, their the platform they're coming from. You can also show your wonderful captions that you created and curated and branded already. You can also, of course, use your graphics, your backgrounds, your logos, like all the, all the graphical stuff and the, the commentary that is coming in. So basically, you can level up your webinar when you're streaming it to your social platforms by adding, by pulling this into studio. And for OBS, the same application, uh, when you preset those scenes, you are taking advantage of our highlight chats feature, which is not available for you if you're just streaming directly from OBS. You won't be able to highlight specific uh, chat comments like we're doing right now. So that is, um, yeah, that's the new feature. And uh, it's definitely, definitely very new, very, very beta. So if you have any questions about it, please let us know and our support team uh, as a quick reminder, it's 24 seven and they are, you know, very equipped and ready to help you troubleshoot, help you onboard with that feature. Um, and yeah, just, you know, let you play and explore. Awesome. So um, I think, uh, yeah, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, um, we have, a uh, have an interesting, um, kind of comment, uh, from, was it? Oh, nope. That's not the one. Sorry. Events unlimited. It was, uh, I keep, I keep clicking on yours. Ah, it keeps it's moving up. <laughs> right, like people are commenting the, and like things are all, moving. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so, um, uh, Fiero is saying try to put, uh, trying to put two sources, um, it would be great. And that is uh, absolutely um, a, a great comment. Um, adding in multiple sources um, would be great. And there is actually a way that you can do that um, right now. Um, you can't directly add two sources from the same interface necessarily, but you can add people yourself as a guest. Um, so for instance, if I have another camera, I can set that up on another device um, and join in as a guest uh, from if I want to show a different angle, um, something like that. And that's actually kind of moving into our next uh, topic, which is the hacks of the Hack day. Hack of the day. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let me go ahead and just join in from my laptop really quick to kind of showcase uh, how you can do that. So a lot of people ask us about multi-camera and when will Restream Studio will support multiple cameras for those who want to do those multiple different angles, right? So Restream currently natively doesn't support it, but we have a workaround that uh, Ben is about to demonstrate. So the hack is very simple. That guest link that you share can be shared with yourself. And then just like this, you access the stream from an alternative source and here is here's Ben showing showing himself from a different from a different angle um, and 
of course, as, as a host or as a producer, you can always do this, which is kind of switching between the two. And like now I'm hidden because you guys can, cannot see me since I'm maximizing one. So we have um, this one or this one. And yeah, so that is uh, that is how you can uh, you you can you can do multi camera and show yourself from different angle. Um, yeah, and I guess with with the con in, in context of RTMP, I guess Ben, you wanted to add a little bit more on that one. Um, you mean the RTMP? Um, option yeah, like so okay. so RTMP option can can also like so so the two sources of RTMP and mm -hmm. um, and the multi camera, like how do, how do those two work together? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, let me just kind of disable that one so I don't have uh, an echo going on here. Sure. There we go. Okay. <laughs> uh, so as far as that goes, um, you can you can definitely add in uh, multiple sources that way. So for instance, if you have even if you don't have two laptops like I do, like a, well, I have like a desktop computer and then I have a laptop um, that I was joining in as a guest from. Uh, so if you don't have a second device um, and you only have like one computer but you have multiple cameras, uh, you could use that RTMP um, option within the studio to stream in from OBS as a second source um, and set up your camera as an as another source like that um, obviously we can't do that right now because we're in the events and so that's not quite supported for events um, but perhaps later on um, when it is supported we can do a demo of like how that might look um, but that's definitely an option uh, from OBS as well um, it, it's particularly if you're not already using the virtual cam like I am <laughs> um, and then you can obviously have uh, multiple cameras set up that way um, or if you have um, maybe like maybe you want to do that from Zoom or some other software you can definitely do that as well it doesn't have to be OBS that's just my preferred kind of go-to streaming software outside of the studio obviously I use the studio for everything um, unless I, I need to to take that extra step and, and do something else um, then I use uh, OBS in that case um, but yeah that's that would definitely be an, an alternative to um, a secondary device um, if you if you don't happen to have a laptop yeah, just one thing to notice that your 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 phones are typically not necessarily super powerful computers, so the quality of your video will be highly dependent on the quality of your mobile internet or your Wi-Fi that you'll be sharing at that point. And uh, if your machine is not very powerful, it's going to be potentially a little bit quirky. Uh, so the bigger and the more po more powerful your machine is, where you're joining as as a second uh, source or second camera, the better quality you are going to get. And there were a couple of questions there about muting. Uh, so you actually will get echo if you join from two different computers in the same room, and like they basically will pick up your your audio from two different microphones but you do have an option to mute your guests as a host and you can also mute yourself when you're joining and the same applies to rtmp if you pulled something uh from rtmp you can also mute that source as as a host if you feel like this is creating creating echo for for whatever reason you can you can you can get it muted or you can mute yourself while while whatever is coming from rtmp is is happening uh to avoid that in case in case that's happening to you um, yeah, all right. So, are, sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, if you are using OBS, you can also just have video only and have no audio sources set up in OBS as well. So it's not actually outputting any audio. It can just output video. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, I think we'll take just just one more question before we we get into our like last and most exciting part. Uh, can I play videos uploaded in Google Drive? So if you have a video that you uploaded in Google Drive, uh, you, there are two ways how you can play that. You can either upload it then to our studio and play it from from your um, as a pre-roll or you will need to actually download it onto your laptop and then use a local source file and play it from there there is another way to play your video um, if if you have it somewhere on YouTube or uh, if, it, if it's posted somewhere and if, even if it's unlisted is you can actually share the tab. Of, of that video, make sure you click the button. There's a checkbox um, that it asks you, do you want to share sound as well, the audio? So make sure if you want people to hear the music from that video, make sure you check that box. And then you can also play that way by sharing your screen, checking the audio on and, and playing it um, on, on the separate tab. So there are three ways basically to do it, but you cannot play directly from your Google Drive as of today. So it has to be on your computer, right. uploaded to us or played as, as a tab when shared, uh, when shared screen. 
Alrighty. So lots of different questions here. Uh, we will definitely be coming back to a lot of you guys on Facebook. And I see Grace from our team was amazing tackling some of you guys, uh, some of your guys' questions because there's so many great, uh, great questions today. And uh, we really appreciate you showing up. So we have a surprise. So as a tradition, every time by the end of the show, we are showing you a promo code for as a little thank you for tuning in and, and sharing your great questions and feedback with us. So today, this is Redemo 17. And this is 25% off any plan this is going to be new signups <laughs> or upgrades it doesn't matter if you have an account already but you know if you're thinking about that rtmp thing and the premium plan while you're on pro this is the opportunity to get it with with a good discount one last surprise for this promo code that we also prepared is to incentivize you folks a little bit. We are actually going to give away a Restream hoodie. Uh, it's kind of hot here in Texas, and I'm assuming in Oregon as well. So we're not wearing the hoodies today. We're just wearing the shirts. But we have still a bit awesome... chilly here. <laughs> oh, is it? Oh, good. Yeah. Good to know. So there's there's this great Restream hoodie with a Restream logo on your sleeve. It's like really nice and cool and, and slick looking. So we are going to ship one of those to the first person who redeems our Redemo 17 today. So we'll just reach out to you by the email that you used. Uh, um, to register. So yeah, first person uh, getting this code to work will get the hoodie from us. Go as, sign uh, up as fast. A <laughs> Go sign up fast, exactly. Yeah. So yeah, so lots of great questions today. We really appreciate you guys all uh, checking, checking this out. And I am actually going to also send the link because I know that it is not very easy to right, to copy and paste this. So this is the link. I just sent it to your um, YouTube and Facebook, and I am going to send a quick reminder that the first person to redeem the code will get a Restream hoodie. And here is your code. So yeah, thanks a lot for showing up today. Lots of great questions. Uh, like I said, we always come back to your uh, to your chat messages afterwards. I know that YouTube chatters don't really stick. So if you feel like there was a question that was very important and we didn't have a chance to answer it, unfortunately, feel free to add it as a comment to this video because we do come back to those and we do respond to them uh, as the day goes by. So definitely we will try to get back to all of you today and, and send some more extra helpful tips there were so many amazing questions today, so we didn't really get to the point where we wanted to share some tips on how to promote your stream. But there is a wonderful blog post uh, that Restream recently posted on how to promote your live streams. It's a quick guide that gives you a very, um, very brief idea and, and kind of like very structured way to, uh, to prepare your stream. Uh, and we're thinking about that from the perspective of pre-production. So things that you do before you go live, such as schedule your events, post on social, promote it through your email list, things that you do during your live event and, and how you can potentially boost and promote the, the event as it's happening. And the post-production, things that you can do with repurposing your content in order to get more exposure and engagement and then circle people back into your live stream that you created originally or the one that you're planning for the future. So have a look. Uh, let us know in the comments if that was helpful. And we will definitely definitely feel free to connect with, um, with any of us, with me or Ben, if you have anything specific for us. And um, if you feel that this was helpful, you know, just give us a little like, subscribe to the next one, and uh, we will see you in a week with the next live stream with Restream. Yeah, it Thanks was a pleasure. Absolutely, always. Well, cheers, guys. Have a good one. And yeah, have a, have a wonderful rest of your week. Thanks for hanging out with us today. Much appreciated. Happy streaming. <laughs>